Hello again, everyone. It's wonderful to see you all. And I'm pleased to introduce Tyus Warden. He's another product manager at Typeform. He's actually our head of product. He has been with Typeform for three years. And he leads up our entire creator experience. So everything that as a builder, as someone creating a form, a survey or quiz, um, he and his team were responsible for that. So we're so pleased to have him here today. And he will be talking about powering up with meaningful data. Um, if you have questions that come up during the session, please drop them in the Q&A chat and we'll get to them um, in about 20 minutes. Thanks everyone. Take it away, Tyus. Thank you. Thanks so much, Rachel. It's really amazing to be here with everyone and it's such an honor. Uh, there's some, some really amazing speakers and it's good to be here uh, with you all. So today I'm going to speak to you a little bit about the power of meaningful data and share some insights into uh, behind the scenes of Typeform to help you level up your conversational data collection. But first, uh, I wanted to start with a quick story. And it's been a very interesting year, to say the least. Um, but if we go back to March, uh, specifically on the 14th of March, this is when the Spanish nation went into lockdown as stricter measures to curb the pandemic were introduced. And I mentioned Spain specifically here, as this is where Typeform's head office is based in the beautiful city of Barcelona. But after about a month or so of being in lockdown, uh, one of our senior data scientists, Jose, started to ask himself whether these unprecedented, unprecedented changes and unprecedented times are being reflected in the data in our product. And one such change, um, which was fairly observable, from the get-go really was this daily occurrence of people coming to their windows and balconies in cities and towns across Spain to applaud healthcare workers at 8 p.m. every night. So Jose started by looking at the total number of responses collected every day leading up to and after that time and what he found was pretty clear. When he compared the pattern from before the lockdown to during the lockdown there was a sharp drop in responses as people took the time away from their computers and their phones to applaud on their balconies. But Jose didn't stop there. He also started to look at uh, the responses in general. And what we were seeing is, was a clear trend uh, and spike in responses overall. And we wanted to know where these responses were, were coming from. And what he found was that certain industries and categories that traditionally had contributed fewer responses were seeing a massive surge. And in particular, we discovered a 339% increase in responses coming from typhoons relating to health, unsurprisingly, a 134% increase in those coming from typhoons related to learning, e-learning, and a whopping 1,597% increase uh, in responses coming from typeforms relating to remote work. And it was evident that traditional businesses were moving online and new businesses were emerging. And once we discovered this, we created new templates to support these merging uses of our product and make it easier for people to get started. But Jose is a really curious person and he kept on digging. And he wanted to know if people were using Typeform to help tackle COVID in any way. And what he found interestingly was by the 1st of April, over three and a half, 3.4 thousand Typeforms had been created with the title relating to COVID-19. And this is when we realized that Typeform was being used to support both the fight against COVID-19 and supporting people to adapt to their new way of working. And we realized that we needed to support this. And we set up the COVID-19 program to give people the ability to use Typeform without cost and encourage more innovators and creators to solve the novel problems being brought about by the pandemic. And from helping to match masks with health workers uh, to helping jazz musicians do online tuition, these are just a few of the inspiring stories people using Typeform to make a difference. And we now have over a thousand people who've signed up to our COVID-19 program. And from that initial 3.4 thousand forms on the 1st of April, 
there's now been over 13,000 forms created that have collected upwards of 7 million responses. And this is just a couple of examples, really, of how we use data at Typeform to power decisions. And every day, our team, uh, as Laura spoke about the data points that we use for the new builder, we use data to learn about how we can improve the product and better help our customers to tackle their problems and achieve their goals. And we're fortunate enough to be at a scale now where we're able to see trends fairly quickly. And to give you a sense of the scale, every day we see approximately 7,000 type forms are created. And each month we collect an average of 30 million responses. And since Typeform has been online, we've collected over 1 billion responses. And I don't think I need to convince anyone here the value of data when it comes to your businesses. Data is undoubtedly a, a powerful tool. And on one hand, it helps us uncover new insights. It enables us to make better business decisions. And on the other, it's a way that we identify people and understand a person, understanding someone's, knowing someone's name, uh, their email, their preferences or their goals. And in a world where competition has never been fiercer and relationships are really the key to sustained business growth, the way we see it is that the way you collect and manage your data can be your hard to copy competitive advantage. And at Typeform, we want to give people and their businesses this competitive advantage. And our goal in the product team is to enable our creators to achieve more with our product. And more often than not, when we speak to customers, what does more mean? It, it tends to mean more responses, um, being able to get more data because this translates to more insights being able to get more leads because this translates to more customers and being able to generate more purchases, which uh, in, in eventually leads to more revenue. So as the old adage goes, if you want to improve something, if you want to get more responses, first you have to be able to measure it. And we think of type forms a bit like a funnel. And we have three main stages of this funnel, the view, starts, and submits. And the goal is really being able to maximize the number of people that see your type form and then who go on to submit. And when we break this down into the metrics, we have two important ones, the start rate, the percentage of people who view the, um, who actually view the form and go on to start it and the completion rate, the percentage of people who start and then go on to actually submit. And unsurprisingly, one of the most important metrics for our creators when they use Typeform is the completion rate. And it's also something that we really obsess over as, uh, as a company. And a question we often get asked is, what does a good completion rate look like? And in truth, it depends really a lot on how you're using Typeform and your industry. But we have some averages, and this is the first time we're sharing this information publicly, but hopefully it helps you to get a sense of where you sit. And let's start with industry profile. So interestingly here, marketplaces and two-sided platforms have on average one of the highest completion rates at 71%. In the middle, we see SaaS businesses, like Typeform, come in at more around 51%. And then on the lower end of the scale, we see that e-commerce, retail and consumer goods have more of an average completion of 38%. But it's still fairly vague when we look at it from an industry profile, because the way you can use Typeform is it can be very different. You could be collecting leads or you could be collecting feedback. So let's take a look at this. And if we dive into the form types, what the actual purpose of the form is for, we can see an interesting um, variation um, and it varies really considerably. On the one hand, we have checklists, uh, primarily an internally facing type of use, which quite predictably has a far higher completion rate at 74%. And on the other side, we have payment forms and order forms, which are asking for payment details, with a slightly lower, uh, well, quite a lower uh, completion rate. And if we actually look at some of the, the, the types of um, form types here, we can see some, some patterns emerge. 
on the left hand side you have polls, research, feedback, feedback which are more focused on collecting insights type of data. And on the right hand side we get to the purposes which are more geared towards collecting personal data or even payment information. And we see the average uh, completion rates are lower in general here. And actually, when we did some analysis into individual questions, we saw this uh, reflected there as well. Questions which asked for things like opinion or uh, people's uh, of review have a much higher completion rate than if you ask for someone's personal information, an email, even their name or their address. And this is also why quizzes are so interesting. Although they often collect personal information, they are very engaging and, as you can see, have a much higher um, average, than average completion rate um, for, the, for, for forms that are asking for that personal information. And this is what makes them a really great tool for things like marketing campaigns. So, just as a caveat, these completion rates are numbers that should give you an indication whether or not your type form is performing out of the ordinary. Uh, but the best benchmark you can have really is yourself. So do use the data and the completion rates from your previous type forms as an indication of whether any adjustments or improvements should be made. And this leads me on to my next topic. How can you actually improve your type forms performance? And well, over the last year, we've really been geeking out about this um, and trying to uncover ways which we can um, see from the data and through, through experiments. Tip number one, time of day matters. Interestingly enough, from looking at the data, we discovered that the total volume of people who start type forms are more or less the same in the morning as in the evening. However, the submission rates in the evening have a 7% uplift in comparison to the morning. So it seems that people have a higher tendency to get distracted or fail to finish forms in the morning, with actually Sunday being the worst of all. So a little bit like the song, easy like Sunday morning, this is not when people are completing type forms. And interestingly, on the other, on the flip side, Monday after work hours is actually the best time uh, in terms of completion rate. So next time you're launching a campaign or a survey, try it out and see if you can increase your responses by sending out a bit later in the day. And this brings me on to tip number two setting expectations. So this means giving people a sense of what they're in for and here, how long they're in it for. We found from a recent experiment that type forms with an estimated time to complete on the screen get more submissions on average. And specifically, you can expect one additional response for every 100 views your type form gets, which might not sound like a lot, but it can add up, especially if each one of those additional responses is a purchase. And so you might be thinking, okay, how do I actually know how long my type form takes to complete? And you'll be pleased to know that next week we're actually releasing a feature that automates, automatically um, calculates this for you, and you can toggle it on in the builder to show it on the welcome screen as you can see in the, in the image there. Uh, though one important thing to note here, from our experiment and our, our research, we found that as you start to show a, a, a predicted completion rate that goes above seven minutes, this is when you start to get a lower start rate. So if that's you, uh, consider shortening your type form or perhaps opting not to show it. And tip number three, optimizing you. So the unique way Typhoon presents questions in a conversational format, one at a time, means you can really evaluate each individual question or screen and its ability to get people to provide a response and move to the next one. 
And we actually uh, have a term for this. We call it the continuance rate. And this is similar to the completion rate, but on a question by question basis. And one way in which you can actually improve your overarching completion rate is actually optimizing each individual question. And as you may have seen, it's, uh, it's now possible to do this in Typeform's product. We, we introduce the ability to have question by question insights, which allow you to understand your question performance and hone in on those troublesome and take action to improve them. And this leads me nicely on to the next tip, use visuals. So using visuals uh, and visually engaging ways to ask questions like picture choice can really help to improve how many responses you get on average. Uh, picture choices, they, they have um, a 5% higher continuance rate than non-picture choice type questions. And um, as you can hopefully see from the image, they really look great and make Typeform really fun for the end user to complete. And for tip number five, we, um, we, we want to make everything more personal and conversations more meaningful at Typeform. And this is actually um, possible with some features we have. Uh, so using hidden fields and recall information they actually allow you to pipe any data that you know already to your type form uh, and into the experience as well as the questions. And this enables you to make the experience feel truly personal to the end user. And it's not just to be nice. We actually see this as um, a great way of improving the completion rate as well. Uh, so we know that forms that use the feature, um, use these particular features, actually have a 6% a higher completion rate on average than those that don't. So next time when it's feasible, if you can utilize some previous information, you know someone's name, use that in the experience. Make it feel much more personal, much personal and like you're speaking to someone. And this really goes hand in hand with that conversational format. So to wrap things up today, and the reason I'm really speaking about these things is that it's a hey, nod to where we're taking the product. Like I said previously, we want our creators to be able to achieve more. And when they use Typeform, we want them to achieve their goals in faster, smarter, more effective ways. And we understand that more than ever, people are stretched. This is why we'll be developing features that offer smart assistance, similar to the um, the calculation of the, the, the completion rate and at the time to complete. And we want to offer these, this assistance at every stage of the Typhoon journey. So from choosing the right questions to how you actually ask them to optimizing the funnel and to maximizing your return on investment. So this is all about giving you the power of the data that we we're collecting and better enabling you to do more than ever um, and have better, more meaningful conversations. And right now we're just scratching the surface. So I really hope you stay tuned for the things to come. Thank you very much. Thank you so um, much. I'd love to answer any questions that you have. And apologies, um, everyone. Thank you for <laughs> bearing with these technical difficulties. This is our first event and not everything works, um, but we're trying to make every interaction count. Um, and so while we may have missed some of Tiza's slides, um, we will absolutely send out a link to share them and they will be up on the Meaningful website um, in the week to come. And now uh, we'll move on to Q&A. Um, Tiza, it looks like your screen froze. Do, do you have audio? Oh, we may have lost ties. So what we can do is thanks to the power of uh, things like Slack and offline communication, um, I can follow up on some of these questions. Um, I Ty's fear we here. might be having some technical issues. Uh... Can you hear me now?
Oh, well, <laughs> everyone, thank you for bearing with us. Um, we are going to end this um, a bit abruptly um, and make sure that we have our tech all worked out. Um, we will answer any questions on our social media channels from this chat that we weren't able to answer. And next up, we actually have Typeform's um, founder, David Okunyev, um, speaking to us about Video Ask. So stay tuned for that, um, and we will be back shortly. Thank you, everyone.